1450 FM 99.3 KNSI. Welcome to another edition of Your Health. Produced in collaboration and conjunction with the folks at Centra Care. Today, we're going to be talking about some sexual health issues. We have a couple of experts in studio. Johnny Steffens is an advanced practice nurse and a certified sex counselor. Johnny, nice to meet you. You as well. And also in studio with us this morning, Elizabeth Phillips, uh, doctor of urology. Elizabeth, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. First of all, we're going to talk about sexual medicine. We're going to talk about the importance of sexual wellness. And there's a lot of information, but also a lot of misinformation that may or may not be out there. So I think we're going to be uh, clarifying a few things today. Who wants the first question? What? What is sexual medicine? Johnny, she's pointing at you, so I guess you've got to go. (laughs) So I think really simply put, sexual medicine is the study and the treatment of sexual disorders. Okay. Uh, I think Elizabeth and I take that definition a little bit further in that we focus um, on sexual wellness um, and health, and we are certainly advocates for sex positivity and pleasure. Okay, so how long have you been dealing with your topic, your a- area of expertise? Uh, medicinally wise, how long has this been on the radar for people? Do you know? Has it been going on for the past 20 years, the past 50 years, since men and women were getting together? What do you think? I would say that the practice of sexual medicine was sort of in its infancy, a little bit prior to the advent of Viagra or Sildenafil. Um, it was very much in, his, in its infancy, and many of the sexual disorders were thought to be more psychologic mm-hmm. or psychogenic. Um, but we've really learned a lot in the past several decades. Um, and so our knowledge of it and our treatment has really been honed and refined. Okay. Uh, what kind of services are we talking about here when we get into sexual medicine, uh, sexual wellness, education, that sort of thing? What do you provide? We provide medical evaluations, which can then lead to our treatment plans for really common sexual issues with men, with women, with couples. Um, That might be around sexual desire and interest, arousal, erections, Mm -hmm. um, orgasms, ejaculation, and certainly a lot of sexual pain we see in our clinic. In addition, because so many women, I think, access our services for sexual pain um, concerns, we oftentimes discover that those are really um, based in some vulvar disorders um, and also might be the result of menopause. So we see a lot of women for those issues now who may or may not be sexually active. And then we do counseling. Okay, now, is it just like it is across the board in every other area of medicine? You can't get a guy to go to the doctor until he's just about dying, right? Guys just don't like to go to the doctor. And I would think when it comes to sexual medicine, boy, that's got to be times 10. We do find that a lot. Um, I think that sometimes men are prompted by their uh, partners to go to the doctor, but I do find that many men will research this online first, and we hope that when they're searching for things, they realize that this you know, many of the things that they may be experiencing are quite common mm-hmm. and that there is help for it. So we're hoping that when they're searching, they're finding us. And then coming in. Let's talk about background and training. Uh, we'll, we'll start with you, Elizabeth. So I am a urologist. Okay. I'm a, an MD. I did a residency in urology and then a fellowship in sexual medicine and genitourinary prosthetics. Um, I'm a nurse midwife, an advanced practice that spent um, 10 years in women's health okay. um, before going back to school and obtaining my certification as a sex counselor. When I returned to Center Care and opened the sexual medicine clinic here five years ago. Okay, so how's business? Are you are you seeing a lot of folks? Is this a pretty common issue that people have to deal with here in Central Minnesota? In my practice in urology, I also do general urology, but I would say at this point about eighty to ninety percent of what I see is sexual dysfunction or okay. sexual medicine. So yes, it's extremely prevalent. How many of you? Are there at Center Care? Are there a lot of doctors that deal with this sort of thing? No, there really is not. No. <laughs> uh, you know, really, primarily, Elizabeth and I are the um, providers um, in within sexual medicine. Uh, we really do, though, practice as a team. Mm-hmm. So it's not uncommon that people will see one and both of us. We also pull in other experts that really help kind of fulfill that kind of expert approach to sexual medicine that might be um, public floor physical therapy, 
Um, it might be OBGYN. Um, we also have our own marriage and family therapist okay. um, that works with us as well. So we really are a team and find that, you know, sex is complicated sometimes. So um, having a village is sometimes helpful. Very good. Now, when we come in for that appointment, can you describe what that is like to maybe kind of uh, break the ice a little bit with folks that are listening in on this conversation? Yeah, I think, you know, there's always a lot of hesitation and some anxiety about coming in um, to see us. Some folks are not completely sure what it is that we do. Um, So we really try to make them comfortable um, right away. Um, That can be the fact that our approach is very matter of fact. Um, There is virtually nothing that makes us blush or become uncomfortable. Clinical is a great word to use, isn't it? It is, but sometimes clinical is... Get, does it get scary sometimes. for people, maybe? I, I think clinical can be sometimes a little too much for people, and okay. people really want somebody who's going to listen to their story okay. and really try to understand what it is that they are struggling with. Sure. Um, we do a really in-depth interview. Um, my initial visits with patients are 60 minutes, which is not common okay. within healthcare. Um, and that really is around understanding what brought them in. Um, you know, nobody is forced um, to come in and see us. And right. so um, taking, making assumptions uh, about what is important to people is really something we need to kind of deal with. And, and so I think it's really around making people feel safe, making people feel like they can trust us, mm-hmm. um, that we're not going to broadcast their sexual history, you know, uh, online. Um, and giving them somebody that they think they can really say anything to. Well, how does someone schedule an appointment? It is, a, is it a referral uh, from another doctor elsewhere in center care? How does that work? So you can get a referral from a primary physician or from any physician to either sexual medicine or to urology, which okay. is where they'll find me. Um, I'm kind of under both umbrellas. So I also see patients in sexual medicine and I see patients in urology. But we don't require a referral. Sometimes people's insurance will require that. Sure, That's just something we ask them to check. Typically speaking, they usually start with Elizabeth and then come over to you? Not no? necessarily. Okay. No. Um, we do share a lot of patients. I get a lot of patients from Johnny. She gets a lot of patients from me, but patients will also kind of find us individually. AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI. You are listening to Your Health. When we return, we're going to talk about the importance of sexual wellness, the health benefits, and what are people thinking when they come in for this conversation? What are they thinking about sexual health and their overall quality of life? That and a lot more to come. You are listening to Your Health on KNSI. AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI. Welcome back to Your Health Today, talking about sexual wellness. Uh, We have some uh, experts in studio with us. Elizabeth Phillips is in the urology department at CentraCare, medical doctor of urology. And also Johnny Steffens, an advanced practice nurse and a certified sex counselor at CentraCare. Ladies, I wonder if people are finding this Surprising. They didn't even know this part of center care existed. Is that a far reaching statement or what do you think? Not at all. I think many people are surprised that this service exists in center care. I think people are surprised that there are practitioners who sort yeah. of specialize in it at all. Sure. Um, and, and is that part of um, maybe some misconceptions that we have with the even comfortability about talking about things and deal well, let alone dealing with them. It's tough to talk about it. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, sexuality in and of itself is a topic that makes lots of people squirm. Um, and I think it also hasn't been completely recognized as a legitimate subspecialty in medicine. And so okay. people don't necessarily associate that with a large healthcare, you know, organization. Um, so they, a lot of people come in and say, I didn't even know you guys were here. You know, I talked to a friend, um, you know, and we've been here for five years. Sure. So um, it's it's surprising that people don't know. Huge sense of relief, I bet, to find you, right? It is. Many people have been to multiple providers before they end up on our doorstep um, and really have just not found um, effective strategies um, or people that can really address 
those issues. Right. A lot of primary care providers and specialists just feel like they're opening up Pandora's box when they talk to people about sexuality and aren't really sure what to offer patients. And so it's really hard to bring up those conversations if you don't know what to tell them. I would imagine, particularly in today's world, no doubt. Why is sexual wellness important? May seem like a really dumb question to ask, but from your point of views, which may be different from other people's point of views, can can you answer that? Why sexual wellness is so important? Well, I think uh, it's important because human beings are really wired um, for connection. Um, and that includes sexual intimacy. Um, you know, our sexuality is every bit a part of our quality of life, as is our physical health, our psychological well-being, our our spirituality. Mm-hmm. Um, at, if you can add on, Elizabeth. Yeah, I also think it helps, you know, as you were saying, we're wired for connection. I think um, having a healthier, flourishing Sexuality helps with relationships, both intimate relationships and non-intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. So – and we know that relationships are vital to our health and longevity. So those health benefits that result from proper sexual wellness, can you explain what some of those may be, some of the differences we may notice like a before and after kind of snapshot? Well, I think probably the most notable are the people who are dealing with pain. Yeah. People who are dealing with pain and sexual pain or genital pain um, are dealing with that all the time, not just when they are wanting to be or trying to be intimate. Mm-hmm. And so that is something, and we all know, um, or it's kind of intuitive, that pain really wears on us in many different ways, emotionally, psychologically, and physically, um, and seems to kind of permeate a lot of areas of, of life. So that's probably the most blatant. And w- when you say pain, you're talking physical pain, correct? Yes. yes. And, and everyone knows physical pain manifests itself between your ears big time. There's anxiety that gets in, it creeps in there and all of that, right? So what do adults usually have to say about sexual health, their quality of life? Is that kind of a stumbling block to get over in the conversation or no? I don't really think it is once we are engaged with someone. I I believe that many people yeah. um, put a high value on sexual um, quality of life, although we tend to minimize that um, both, I think, for ourselves, but also certainly within healthcare, it's oftentimes minimized. And we know from research that People want to talk about this and they mm-hmm. want to talk about it in healthy ways. Right, right. Um, for example, 75% of cancer survivors um, want their provider to talk to them about the sexual problems associated with their diagnosis and treatment. Right. And less than half get that information. Um, we work with a lot of cancer survivors and in collaboration um, with our oncology uh, folks. Can you talk about the most common challenges that people face, both men and women, when it comes to their sex life? Uh, I see majority men when it comes to sexuality issues. Um, And obviously the big hitters are erectile dysfunction, Peyronie's disease, which is a deformity or curvature of the penis, um, desire issues, issues with ejaculation um, or orgasm, and low testosterone, which a lot of people think is rampant and really is not. Interesting. Why would we think that? Oh, television commercials, for gosh sakes, may have something to do with that, right? So does everybody benefit from a visit, or are there some folks that, no matter how much you talk with them about certain things, they just, there there is no satisfaction for them? I think some people are, you know, doing just fine. It's it's a very personal thing to talk about, um, but if you, if you, don't feel like you're meeting your full potential there or feel like you're, there's something missing or something that was there that isn't anymore. Um, I really think it is important to seek out help um, or counseling with that. Um, I think the importance of intimacy can't be stressed enough because in the world in which we live, sometimes that safe harbor is all we have left, right? Right. We have to go home. We have to be with that partner. And we have to be, we have, I believe, we have to be intimate with that person. 
Yeah, and intimacy can express itself in many different, Very different ways, ways in, right. in different relationships. A conversation, and for gosh sakes. Absolutely. And so that's, you know, getting back to what Johnny was saying, that's where we can't really make assumptions about what it is that a person is looking for or wanting. We really have to have them verbalize that to us. Elizabeth, you have just set the table for our final segment. We're going to talk about some of the common misconceptions that we all have when it comes to sexual wellness and our own sexuality. You are listening to Your Health, AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI. We'll be right back. AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI. Welcome back to Your Health, this time your sexual health and wellness. Johnny, I want to ask you some questions about women and some of the issues that they have to deal with, sexually speaking. So I think it's probably the most common things that I see in my practice, and my practice is predominantly women and their partners, um, is certainly around sexual arousal um, and a desire, um, orgasms, um, sexual pain that we've already kind of talked about is predominantly seen um, in our female uh, patients. Um, But I also think a lot of women really struggle embracing themselves as healthy sexual beings and also how to have healthy sexual relationships. So it's not uncommon for someone to come in um, to seek our services who may not have a medical diagnosis but are just not experiencing sexuality as they should. Okay. Something's wrong. They just don't know what. And a lot of women think they're broke. And so I I do a lot of conversations around you are not broke. Good, good. So some of the common misconceptions regarding sexual wellness and sexuality, uh, what are, what are like, do you guys have a top five list that you deal with more commonly than others? I don't know if I can give you five, but I can <laughs> tell you that um, I think the biggest thing when people come in is they think that there's really nothing that can be done. And it could be because other doctors have told them that or other practitioners have told them that. Why would um, they do that? Why would they say there's no help for you? I'll be honest with you. I don't think that our education is great when it comes to sexual wellness. I know that education in medical school is picking up on that, but I myself, I think I may have had three or four lectures about that in medical school. So it's just not something that people know about. And if they haven't been taught or haven't sought out those resources, your practitioner may not know what they are. Um, and not know what the resources are that, you know, that we exist. Okay. But that's probably the biggest thing I can say is that people just think that there's nothing to be done or they've already tried everything that there is to try. And generally speaking, that's usually not the case. Johnny, mm-hmm. what do you think? Yeah, I, de- I definitely see that and agree with that as well. Um, I also think that there is still this prevailing belief that sexuality um, and the challenges that people experience are psychological, mm-hmm. um, that they're really a mental health issue. Um, how, other, often, how often is that as opposed to physicality? Predominantly, I believe that there's a physical component. Okay. Um, which gets in the head, which, which compounds it. If and, it's happened for right. a long time, if you've been dealing with sexual pain for 10 years, Ooh. that doesn't you know play well in our psychological well-being and certainly sure. not in our relationships. But I, don't, I just don't feel that most sexual issues are solely rooted in psychological issues. Well – How do we get more information? I think um, participating in education events that are, you know, based on evidence and done by professionals is Mm -hmm. can be very useful. Um, A huge portion of what we do in our visits is education. I really feel like it is part of my job to vet um, information that people are seeking and going online, Um, books, who's writing what. Like I, I know that. and I think the Internet can be certainly very overwhelming and full of great stuff, but full of a lot of misinformation. Do you guys deal with couples? Is it is it typically a couples situation or a one on one? I wouldn't say it's typically couples. Um, you know, certainly a lot of people who come in are in sexual relationships um, and, and want to improve those. Um, my work as a sex counselor, I do both individual sexuality counseling, okay. but I'm the couples person as well. Gotcha. So I do a lot of couples work, um, which may be sought out just for that or mm-hmm. somebody is getting medically treated for a, a sexual disorder. And so we also want to try to enhance 
the relationship and communication skills and finding other ways to experience sexuality and pleasure. Is there a problem with people understanding how things change from their 20s to their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and beyond? Does sex have an expiration date? I'd say the answer is no. As we were saying before, I think that people need to determine that on their own. And for a lot of people, the answer is no. We mm-hmm. see patients and I see patients into their, well, into their 90s. I'm not sure if I've seen someone yet over 100, but that's sure to come. A couple of years. Give it a couple more years. Mm-hmm. We're all living longer, right? Yeah, and I think that's part of the misconceptions that um, as we get older, we are no longer – not only are we no longer sexual beings because we're not young and beautiful anymore, um, but there's also this belief that older adults are not sexually active nor want to be anymore. Um, and, and that really is you know, not true. Again, certainly that is more of a priority for some than others, um, but my predominant practice is adults 40 and up. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is who I see. I find them the most motivated. Um, I find that their success rates are actually quite good. Um, and I have women who are 70 some years old sitting in my office saying, this is my time. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. How do we reach out to you to get this very personal issue? I'm not going to call it a problem, a very personal issue taken care of. Elizabeth? You can certainly go online, find our phone numbers at Centricare Sexual Medicine. We have our own clinic there. Um, getting specifically to me in urology, it's Centricare Urology. We're located in St. Cloud, and the sexual medicine clinic is located in the Centricare Plaza, so very near to each other. You know, not everybody needs to have a fairly expensive medical evaluation um, and consult with us, so we do a lot of community education as well. Um, we have um, our first men's sexual health night coming up on October 1st at Pantown Brewing. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth and I um, will be um, at that event. Also doing a session specifically for women on sexuality and menopause on October 24th. And those are free events. Our events are generally always um, free for attendance. Um, and people can go to Center Care classes and events and register for either one of those events. Women are certainly welcome um, at our men's event as well. Thank you so much for talking about some things that, you know, generally aren't discussed over the dinner table with a group of friends. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI. Again, our guests in studio, Johnny Steffens and Elizabeth Phillips. You're listening to Your Health on KNSI.